Hey y'all, welcome to episode two of Royal Detox. This is Journey with Jazz. Let's get it poppin'. Today I'll be talking about the best and the butts. So what does that mean? It means everything. Everything that you can possibly think of has something good about it and something that is annoying. Something that irritates the life out of you. Something that you cannot deal with or stand. Think about your closest friend. Think about your relationship. Think about a teacher that you really enjoy. Think about someone that you work with. There are so many people that we can think of that we are around continually. And there are so many things that we love about them. But, see, the buts. There are also so many things that annoy us or irritate us or flaws that we can see within them. And I wanted to talk about this today because I think a lot of us expect perfection out of our relationships and expect perfection out of those who we love and that are closest to us. And it's just so unrealistic. Do you want somebody expecting perfection out of you? Do you want somebody to be keeping track of your wrongdoings? Do you want somebody to say, oh, I'm done with that person? As soon as you mess up, as soon as you offend them, is that how you want them to move? So why do we move that way? Everybody has best and buts. Everybody has traits about them that are lovely, that you feel like you can just joke with them all day long. You can do anything. You can go get food or hang out with them or go to the movies, have dinner with them, and you have the time of your life. But then they may say something or do something where you're like, oh, I'm not feeling that. I don't like how she just said that. I don't like what she just did. I'm feeling some type of way. And so when we do those things, now we're holding people by a thread and we're ready to put them on the back burner or just cut them off. And I think that we have to remember just how imperfect we all are. We all have the best in the buts. We all have things about us that people love. It's our strengths. Let's take me off, for example. Moi. Moi, for example. So, what are some of my strengths? I love to publicly speak. I love to, um, like, plan events and get people together, rally up a lot of people, unify people, and help people see, wow, we have all these things in common. Let's work together for a common goal. I love to pull strengths out of people. If I identify something about you that you're dope at, okay, I'm gonna tell you. And if I have the opportunity, I'm going to give you a platform to be able to show that particular gift to the world and work on it and prune it. Those are just some of my strengths. So these may be things that somebody loves about me, but I have flaws, so many flaws. I think that I have a level of anxiety. I overthink things. Sometimes I'm rushing, I can be sloppy and forgetful. I people please too much. And sometimes it causes me to change my mind a lot, be indecisive, say yes and no, then yes and no. Um, what else? I can take charge too much when it's not called for. And sometimes step on other people's toes because I'm out of line. I wanna be at the balls, I wanna be in charge. It's just a personality trait that I have that, you know, have worked against me before. Those are just comparing strengths and weaknesses. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And we have to realize that both of these, the best and the buts, are at play in all of our relationships. So, when you identify people's weaknesses, your friendships, your loved ones, your boyfriends, your spouses, you have to understand that that's a part of them. You don't have to change them. You don't have to hold that against them and say, oh no, they're not gonna talk to me like that. Oh no, they're not going to do me like that. I'm done with them. Because when we hold people to that particular standard, we're holding them to a standard of perfection. Oftentimes, a lot of disagreements are conflict between communication. People haven't communicated in the same way. What you said, I heard something differently than what you said. Sometimes it's just viewpoints. I was raised this way, you were raised that way. So we think differently. Sometimes it's faith and spirituality. Sometimes it's just 
if you live together, if you're roommates, if you're spouses, clean it up. I prioritize dishes. I prioritize this and that. You prioritize making the bed. You prioritize this and that. So we're bumping heads over these little things. And I may see, oh, this is a particular flaw in somebody because we have a disagreement. I mean, it's the buts of the relationship. But let's focus on the best, the things that I love about them, the things that are the best in them. And let's hone in on those things and celebrate those things so that I can see more of those things. I think that's what's really important. Um, we live in a generation where it's almost second nature to cut people off. It's almost second nature to be offended and just be done with somebody or to hold people to this standard that is just unrealistic. And I think, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that when there's conflict and disagreements and someone does you some type of way, you should just overlook it and be like, whatever. I'm not saying that at all. I think that the ability to communicate our feelings and when something hurts us and when we disagree with something, I think that particular skill is very malnourished in our generation. I think a lot of our parents didn't teach us that. So my parents always encouraged us to work things out amongst me and my siblings, to talk things out. They always ask us how we feel about certain things. So and they're into mental health, so they get the psychology behind all of that. But um, that is something that comes second nature in my family, but that's just not the case in a lot of black families, in a lot of families in general. So people are carrying things that they learn in their household to all these other social settings, to all these other friendships, to these relationships. And so, it's always, it's also understanding that this is what this person has experienced. This is that person's background. But at the same time, you have to model, okay, let me communicate well so I can model how communication is done. So when that person hurts you or offends you, okay, let's talk. When you did this, this is how I felt. I don't know if you meant it like that. I don't know if you intended that, but that's just how I felt. And I just want to let you know that's how I felt. That's that. And then they can say, oh, I'm sorry, or oh, no, I didn't mean that, or no, you took it the wrong way. And you can kind of sort out the differences, but the important thing is you talked, you opened up, you communicated. And that's how you sort out the best and the buts. There is always gonna be both, always at war. And I think when we love someone, when we cherish someone, we put them in this particular place in our hearts. So then if they do something that hurts us, we almost want to put this guard up and oh no you can never come back to that part of me again because I let you in and you hurt me and I think that that is I mean I do that I don't I don't know when I do it at what point in time but I just I know in certain friendships and relationships I do that so I think that there is a balance between identifying certain traits in people oh this person moves like that this person is always late this person is flaky you know i mean you can that's how we live you can identify certain traits about people and move accordingly but i think that it's unfair to cut people off from access to us to be able to love us and care for us i think instead we should accept all that they bring and realize that no matter how much we love and cherish them they're still imperfect Let's accept the best and the buts, the things that annoy and irritate us. Let's accept it. That does not mean let somebody walk all over you, be abusive, talk down on you, be poisonous to you, be negative. Be very clear. The company that you keep is very important and bad company does corrupt good morals. And so I want you to understand that that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. You should be very careful and selective in the people that you're continually around. But in doing that, I guess I'm saying to always have that in mind that no matter who you're around, there are going to be great traits in certain people, but there are going to be certain things that you don't like. As long as you can say that overall, this person betters me, they love me, they're genuine, they care about me, even though they did this particular thing. Forgive them, accept them for the best and the buts, and learn to love them through it and model how you want something to be done. Because a lot of times, things that people are doing wrong we do too. I know that happens for me all the time. I'll be ready to call somebody out on something and then God will show me you do the same thing. And it humbles me and it helps me extend grace to people continually. And so I think 
that's the one thing that I would like for everyone to take away from this video is to accept the best, the best in the butts of everything. Not only people, but situations as well, because they'll always coexist and it's possible to allow them to coexist and to maneuver through it. All right, that's it for episode two of Royalty Talks, the best in the butts. I will see y'all next week.